Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to ABB India Limited's Q3 CY 2022 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded, and any unauthorized recording of this call is strictly prohibited. The recording will be made available on the company's and SEBI's website sub subsequently. I now hand the conference over to Mr. T.K. Sridhar, Chief Financial Officer of ABB India Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Aman. <clears throat> very, good, very good morning to all of you. I think it's a pleasure to connect with you back again um, after the Q3 results, which we just declared last week. So on the call with me today, I have Mr. Sanjeev Sharma, the Country Managing Director for uh, ABB India Limited. Then I have the business representative, the leads in the businesses, Sanjeev Arora, who leads motion business. Then I have Subrata Karmalkar, who leads the um, <clears throat> robotics, and uh, Balaji for purpose automation. So we're not able to have Kiran Dutt on the call because he's busy with some of the visitors out there, but I think we will be able to handle those questions as well. So <clears throat> without wasting much time, I hand over to Sanjeev to take us through some of the key highlights of uh, uh, the quarter, and then I will follow it up with the commentary on the financial performance. So over to you, Sanjeev. Uh, thank you, uh, Sridhar, and good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this call. Uh, I'll take you through some uh, business highlights very quickly. So in terms of uh, business highlights, uh, we continue to see positive momentum with strong financial foundations uh, in this company. Our orders and revenue and profitability has been moving in the right direction. Consistent margin improvement and cash momentum is visible to us. And uh, we are also doing uh, some pioneering work in green factory buildings, which have been recognized by the market. Uh, just to name the few, we, we have been recognized by IGBC as the pioneers in this area, in the, in the green, building, green building area, and the Crystal rated us as a strong uh, ESG uh, company. There have been multiple drivers uh, which are driving the business growth, uh, and mainly it is the solid order inflows from mix of sectors, traditional and emerging. Our backlog has increased by 37%. It provides uh, adequate forward visibility for us, and exports are also making a good contribution. Just to give you a flavor of some of the um, orders and the activities in the marketplace for us in a wide ranging sectors, uh, in the hot strip meal, mills, uh, you know, we have the motors and drive packages, electrical control and implementation package for cement uh, player, uh, electric traction motor for railways, uh, smart control system for a major chemical company, power distribution equipment and switch gear for leading metals company, Advanced process control solutions, uh, you know, which go into 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 the lime kiln production. So you can see our products, multiple products. We have about 20 market uh, leading businesses, which operate in 20 plus market segments. So there's a good interplay of uh, you know the different products into different market segments. So that gives us the bottom stability in terms of riding through up and low cycles of the business in different segments. Next. Well, in terms of uh, orders that are also comprised of identified high focus growth segments, range of our actions calibrated with focus growth segments, it has led to good growth in the emerging market segment, especially the high growth uh, market segments, namely food and beverage, data center, renewables, water, etc., were identified, and we have some deep penetration in these market segments. Uh, we will deep dive into one of such identified sector each quarter, and we shall start with data center this quarter. In the data center, uh, this market segment has a uh, three-layered uh, market as visible from outside. It is the enterprise uh, data centers run by the companies themselves. 
Then we have the co-location, sorry, the enterprise data centers, which is the small and medium size, then the co-location and the captive ones. And the growth areas we see uh, right now, the spread of these data centers are in few cities, uh, and it is also following the trend we saw in APAC region as well as other countries. USA is a front runner, followed by UK, Germany, and China, and we see India will continue to see growth in this area. And ABB offers a range of EL, MO, and PA solutions here. And we will, we will see some expansion in hyperscale data centers due to global players coming into India. And we are seeing that activity in Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai. Also, the 5G tax exemptions, local storage of data, digital India, data protection bill, development of tier two, tier three cities, and cloud adoption. Uh, they will drive this particular segment going forward, and it is at the early stage of development. Tech drivers reduce footprint through skids, scalable and flexible solutions, and the equipment which are IoT enabled and sustainable also are the flavors of this particular market segment because all the players who are uh, setting it up, they want to provide high reliability and availability services to their customers. Uh, so they only choose best-in-class components and the products in the market, and ABB falls into that uh, sweet spot. Challenges, of course, uh, are around power reliability, water scarcity of data center cooling security, but those are the topics any industry faces, but they will be uh, kind of uh, you know, resolved as the data center footprint uh, spreads across the country. We, are, we, we see a growth rate projected of 22% in 2022, and it's almost a U.S. $1 billion uh, plus opportunity. Next. I would like to talk about implementing ABB India ESG strategy, wherein we have a significant movement in terms of the actions on the ground, wherein four out of our six units are now green factory certified. And uh, we have become water positive in, we will become water positive in two units uh, by 2022. Already one unit is water positive. And as per ESG agenda, we have clearly defined three steps approach, focus on green factory buildings, green manufacturing process, and green products. On the green factory building approach, we are converting all our factories and offices greener more sustainable through IGPC, platinum, or gold certification with major focus on energy management, using our own products and solutions, improvement focusing on strengthening of our monitoring systems, improving lighting efficiency, and enhancement of utilization of green power. All our campuses now run on 100% renewable energy across the country. So this is something which we are very proud of, and this is something we want to maintain as we go forward. Water management, optimization on water efficient fixtures, reduction of turf and overall irrigation system along with rainwater harvesting, how we manage the landscaping, and all these elements have been coming together, and we have been uh, considered by CRISIL as well as IGBC to be certified in 2021 and 2022 as uh, people who really have moved the needle in this area. And that's something we do not to convince anybody, just to convince ourselves that this is the right thing to do. And we also make our suppliers to participate and we are going to spread this out to our suppliers so that they can also understand how to carry out these uh, green initiatives so that we can have a much better green footprint across our supply chain. In any case, all our products are energy efficiency enabling equipment, so all our customers also get the benefit uh, of getting the, uh, yeah, you know, kind of the energy efficiency by using our technology. So that's again is a, a good, good uh, spot we have. In ESG agenda, uh, we also have taken target of diversity and inclusion with internal and external focus. We are uh, partnering with number of foundations outside and also internal recruitment and shop floor focus and we are seeing a good movement there. So there's a lot that we can talk about if there are specific actions or specific questions you have in this area later on. In the meantime, I hand it over to TK Cesar to provide you financial highlights.
Thank you, thank you very much, Sanjeev. So we come to the uh, financial highlights for Q3. But I think uh, we go to that slide. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. So I think um, <clears throat> there again, there's a quarter was uh, <clears throat> another quarter of solid performance where we saw order inflows maintaining the momentum. So we booked orders of 2,600 uh, crores, roughly 2,634 to be precise, and uh, <clears throat> most of them were from base orders. So we did not have any large uh, specific orders to say so. So otherwise, I think uh, there's a very sort of, I would say, uh, a very welcome quarter for us because it was, it was able, we were able to maintain the momentum. And uh, backlogs at an all-time high, we're talking of 6,500 crores. This provides a lot of visibility for us. I would like to dwell upon order backlog as we go through the slides for each of these divisions. Right, first of all, I think these order backlogs have and are very solid. So we have a clear visibility of what will uh, be the uh, future revenues as such. But I think we also need to look at um, how and when will those order backlog get executed. So uh, revenues, we are up by 39% uh, uh, for the quarter. I think uh, this is also coming up from a strong order back of what we had, and then also the execution patterns which showed up from the flow businesses um, across the uh, organization. Uh, PBT, uh, we are at 10.8 percentage, pretty clear to all of us. I think it's also more from the fact that uh, you now we delivered more revenues and those advantages of volume um, expansions and also the mix expansions probably helped us in this run. Uh, <clears throat> we did have an extraordinary income of 45 crores and that's basically for the uh, second leg of transaction which we had for the sale of turbo business. So that's a one-time gain. So what we measured, we remain consistent with profit before tax, before exceptional items. So that's the place where we measure ourselves as to how consistent we are. So on our journey for delivering 10% uh, bottom line, so we are on the track. So on an accumulated basis, we have reached 10.1% with this particular performance for the quarter. Profit of the tax. Yeah, this is the percentage what we want to be in, so 9.6, but uh, we have to make sure and uh, realize that this is also includes in one-time impact of 45 crores, right? So that's something. So, but, our, uh, but I think we still believe that consistency and credibility of performing um, <clears throat> at an, uh, in a double-digit growth at PBT level and further enhancing the expansions over there will lead us to that particular ambition of getting back to the uh, double-digit net impact uh, sometime in the future. So operational EBITDA, strong operational EBITDA, 12 percentage compared to 11 percentage sequentially and 9.4 for the quarter. Uh, cash reserves remain robust. So we are at 3,200 crores almost. <clears throat> so if, uh, we will go to the next slide, which is, um, this is something which is pretty interesting as usual for all of you. This uh, <clears throat> throws some light about how the expenses are moving inside the company and also how is the revenue trajectory is happening. So uh, if you look at it, I think uh, two, three uh, areas where I would like to seek your attention. Uh, one is on the other income. So people, I mean, there are definitely questions as to why the other income is high. So first thing I would like to say that uh, we do have uh, definitely more cash reserves than what it was in the past. Therefore, they have an interest accrual so which is and also with a higher interest rate and also um, with uh, uh, better options what we had uh, chosen to. So so this is the first thing which we have and that amounted to almost 12 crores, no, 10 to 12 crores of income. Apart from that, we had a one-time uh, tax refund uh, <clears throat> from the government on account of interest on the deposits what we had with them. So that's something which is three, four crores. So, so overall, I think we are probably uh, in the same range, excluding these options. Um, we are in the same range as past for the previous year. Uh, but I think the interest um, on deposits will continue until, until we see an utilization of the cash as well as in the uh, revision interest, downward interest rates, which uh, may not be likely in the future. So now going forward, I mean, uh, if you look down at the expenses, uh, personal expenses more in line with the um, run rate. So and that represents um, uh, <clears throat> the annual increases what we have. The material cost uh, is 65.2 percentage compared to 64 percentage roughly last, uh, you know, last year, but in the same range as what we had in the last quarter as well. 
right so uh, 63.8 sorry this is for the q222 and uh, 65.5 percentage in q321 so <clears throat> i think uh, the uh, deviation is more because of the revenue mix which we had in q3 uh, q222 which was uh, uh, more toward towards exports and services which is slightly less than in this particular quarter and uh, the next uh, topic is around um, uh, variations on account of exchange rate fluctuations they are more uh, and better managed at this point of time because we did not see so much of volatility on commodity and we did of course it did see some volatility on forex so it is limited to 30 crores and the other parameters remain consistent with what we had been uh, development uh, looking at uh, earlier so this is the, by and large a summary of how we um, performed on the uh, p and l side of it so now with this we go into how each and every business area the segments what we say how they are performing so uh, the first comes electrification. I think electrification continues its growth trend. So we are definitely seeing a consistent um, third consistent quarter of uh, more than 900 crores of order intake. So on um, an um, Y on Y basis, we are talking of 36 percentage increase, and this is more from the fact that our focus are more on um, tier two, tier three cities, and deeper customer engagement, as what Sanji was mentioning. So that's something which we are um, uh, seeing to continue, and uh, the conversion of uh, no, orders into revenues also is pretty strong. So and that's something which we are um, particular about, and uh, the backlog. Uh, I think this is also a consistent early growing 18 percentage. So this is this gives good visibility for revenues on the flow business, which is there for electrification. And if you look at the uh, profitability trends, I think we are definitely improving the profitability from where it was to what we are today. So and uh, this, def um, this is also a result from the volumes what we are uh, trying to deliver. Uh, the capacity um, and advantages what we have got that's something which uh, is helping us and needless to say the better price realization is also another factor <clears throat> when we go to motion we see a similar trend in orders and uh, revenues and order backlog also in a similar trend so and, uh, we see that there also we have strong order backlog but I think uh, the one which I would like to call out is this order backlog consists of uh, major orders for uh, system drives and also the traction converters so that they have a longer duration of deliverability unlike a flow business like motors um, or, or uh, drive products. So that's something which um, cannot be directly converted into revenues uh, immediately. So they have to follow a certain milestone of uh, delivery periods what has been agreed with the customer. Right? So therefore, that's how we see that um, uh, while the flow business is in motion will uh, follow a pattern, whereas the system businesses will follow a delivery schedule which has been agreed for the, um, with the customers for the project. And the profit before tax, I think profitability remains, continues to remain strong, and that's more from the revenues, what we have, and the mix, and this time we definitely had an impact of uh, uh, forex and commodities as well. So going to um, uh, process industries, I think this is a business which um, uh, has been, I think, consistently growing, um, unlike in the previous past. So this is um, and, uh, <clears throat> this is a reflection of the fact that um, the uh, um, the core sector is doing a lot of investment. And that's something what is getting converted into orders for ABB. So we see that this uh, and uh, a good growth in order backlog. So that means we are talking from 14, 1400 crores to 2500 crores of free order backlog. So these are project revenues and that will probably start to uh, deliver into more of uh, starting from 23, 22 uh, end onwards into 23. So they, because they are have to follow the project milestones, uh, that's something what we need to do. And uh, <clears throat> Q321, I think in, in terms of PBT, that included turbocharger business, which is no more uh, with us, and also which had an, uh, a good service volume in, uh, <clears throat> in, 22, uh, in last year at the same time. So according, I mean, in a nutshell, this is a business which is actually turned around uh, in, a, in a more solid way than what it was before, both in terms of market presence as well as uh, coming down on the profitability side of it.
robotics uh, and discrete automation so this is also another business which is a fast growing business but at this point of time uh, certain headwinds in terms of execution what we see is more from the supply chain disruption right and i think this is something which uh, every um, other agenda which is general to all any robotics manufacturer at this point of time but we see that uh, with um, you know with the steps what we have taken and what will be um, basically yield results uh, going forward uh, in um, in yielding better revenues so overall i think uh, um, we see that uh, the order backlog is also consistent with the increase in revenues what we get uh, the last slide is around uh, uh, how are the businesses uh, looking at i think by channels it's pretty clear that um, uh, <coughs> the direct sales the channel partners and distributions can happen to be in uh, uh, <clears throat> the most of the business is coming from and by offerings project and services seem to um, at 20% 23% is what we see and product businesses is on the increase but i think this will undergo a change as and when the pa orders start to convert into uh, revenues which will happen in the quarters to come and uh, by geography of course we have orders from exports which is um, between 12 to 13 percent 12 to 15 percent so overall i think uh, now this was at another quarter where uh, we could see that the businesses are able to um, maintain the momentum and uh, <clears throat> yeah and the expenses are under control and focus so on this note so we could take in now start to take the q and a thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Renu Beth from IIFL Securities, please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good afternoon team and uh, congratulations for the strong performance. Uh, my first question is, um, during the last quarter, ADB did commission um, uh, their uh, factories and uh, they also implemented Industry 5.0 across uh, some of their key facilities here. So if you can elaborate in terms of the capacity expansion which we have undertaken across key segments, uh, are they predominantly for the domestic market or for the export market as well? And uh, what could be the incremental capex plans for CY23? That's the first question. Thank you. Thank you, Renu. Thanks, uh, thanks for this question. Uh, yes, I think as we publicly made known that we expanded the capacity for our smart products uh, factory, wherein we made investments to increase the uh, you know, capacity as well as increase the productivity and automation in that plant. And that's where this plant was inaugurated by the global division manager, Jam Piero, and together with me. And, uh, and it is really catering to the domestic growth that we are seeing in the electrification business. And uh, as we go forward, uh, this plant has come to a sophistication which can match and even better any plant that we have in the world. So typically what happens is when our such capacities get created, uh, their first uh, uh, direction for them is to serve the domestic market because that's how we play this large market and which is expect, ex accepting our product in a, in, a, in a good way and in all the market segments we are exposed to. And then we uh, leave it to the global divisions to make use of this footprint leverage, which is producing at a high productivity at a, at a cost they like, as well as competence that we have to start supplying uh, this factory, uh, start using this factory part of their global supply network. So we don't make that decision where we export. It is our global divisions who use these factories as their network footprint where they want to take products. And that's how we will see in an organic way it will continue to grow. Uh, we did have, uh, uh, you know, we do have some expansion plans which are underway, so it will be premature for me to comment on that, and you will hear from us uh, as we go forward, uh, and that, that's more than one, uh, both directed for domestic as well as uh, uh, market opportunities which are outside the country, and you will hear from us as we go forward. 
So yes, there is an active footprint. Uh, and as I speak to you, I just met with uh, some global division managers who've been visiting me my office this morning. And I see that everybody is looking at India market, both from the domestic footprint as well as a base uh, for products and services as we go forward. So those plans are being drawn and they are not firm. But then as we go forward, I see a good momentum taking place for domestic market expansion as well as for exports. Um, so my second and last question is more uh, broad-based. Um, if, so, if you see the order flows, uh, process automation, which is, uh, as you mentioned, has a high proxy of the core sectors, has now seen consistent order inflows. And um, three of the four quarters, last four quarters, uh, inflows in excess of 7 billion rupees. While robotic automation, more of factory automation related business has been broadly flattish. So when we read through in terms of how should we look at the broad based CAPEX environment, uh, do you see large project order inflows continuing? Um, any signs of headwinds uh, from any particular pocket of market which could disappoint uh, whether domestic or international uh, on this leg? Thank you. On the core sector, we see that uh, they have not invested for a long period of time. And when I go out and meet some customers, uh, be it in east part of the country or west part of the country or south part of the country, even TK series have traveled with me and we met some customers. Uh, let me tell you, their optimism is much, much higher than we had before we met them. So, so I see there is a significant uh, build up of uh, capacity and capability and uh, resilience of some large and medium sized customers. And we are seeing not only with the end users, we are also seeing uh, a good uh, product project built up with the EPCs who are going to cater to those core sectors. So, and, and they are converting, and as they convert, we see them in our process automation growth. So I don't think this story is over or any significant concern is developing for us in any segment. Uh, there could be some soft corners here and there, but that's not significant to mention. Are we there? Uh, Ms. Faith, is the question answered? Uh, yeah, that's broadly done. Anything to be concerned from the export market? That's it, and uh, thank you from my side, sir. Yeah, so export market, I think we continue, as I said, we continue to play it. As we say, we don't drive the export market. ABB Group decides the, uh, you know, the export market. We present our sophisticated footprint to them, and that gets added to their network of factories and capabilities. So we do a lot of services export, uh, uh, wherein our robotics team, they execute projects uh, all around the globe. Uh, on the manufactured pro product side, we are seeing a good traction on EL and MO side. Uh, they are already exporting, and then we continue to see the growth in the markets they are participating. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, much, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, team. Uh, congratulations on a great quarter, so both on order inflows, execution, and margin expansion. Uh, so, Shiva, uh, sorry, uh, Sanjeeta, you mentioned about the uh, uh, IGBC recognizing you but for your. Sorry, may I request you to use the handset? You're not uh, clear, it's muffled, the audio is. Yeah, hi. Sorry. So, uh, so on the green building side, you mentioned that all your buildings are now green buildings and uh, powered by renewable power. So I just wanted to understand as a use case, so uh, for the general market uh, and your customer segment, so how do you think to replicate this success across your customers and how big can this opportunity for you? So first of all, we don't see this as an opportunity. We see this as a right thing to do because when you look at the environmental and you make campuses as well as your products green, that's our duty as an industry to participate in, in the meaningful way in the in this sector. Now, so that's the first thing. That's our first motivation. And then Syriza next, sitting next to me, whenever we invest there, we always make a business case for ourselves that it is a right thing to do. So there's a positive ROI of it. And we see positive ROI of on all our investments. So once we are convinced using our own products and solutions in our own campuses that it provides positive ROI, our uh, salespeople, when they d deal with the customers, they have a showcase wherein they can actually showcase how these products and solutions, which are towards energy efficiency and uh, lower the GHG emissions of the customers, how they can be used. So most of our buildings have become and campuses have kind of becoming 
uh, you know, a kind of a showroom uh, or demo room for our people to bring customers. And we are seeing quite an increase of customers visiting us and looking at how these technologies are applied. And we see good response and good uptake of high quality, high energy efficiency products by the uh, customers. So that's our agenda. And now with respect to the benefits, we would like both our customers to understand and grow with us. And also we would like suppliers to also understand and grow with us so that our value chain right from suppliers to us to customers is completely uh, you know, having a low carbon footprint of whatever activity we do. So that's our prime aim for this. But from the uh, overall uh, business sense and sustainability point of it, so is it a very small segment for us right now? And do you think that over the next few years it can become a significant uh, share of our order books? So right now, if you really look into the energy efficiency so solutions, our motion division, if you look into all their revenues, majority of them contribute to the environmental reduction of the footprint of our customer. Our electrification solutions, especially the automation part of it, directly impacts how the buildings consume energy and they can reduce energy up to 30%. So it has a direct impact. So if you really look into our sustainability agenda, most of our GSG emission targets are achieved by making sure customers use the products and solutions that we have so that when they use them, they have a reduced footprint. So it's built in right into the, at the core of our business model, whether it is MOEL, process automation, and robotics, which basically provides more uh, bang for the buck by, uh, you know, have more productivity on the shop floor, manufacturing shop floor. So if you really look into the sustainability agenda for ABB, our all four business areas and the divisions, Actually, the prime focus is towards energy efficiency, and when they are applied and supplied to the customers, they achieve those. So I would say you look into our numbers. At a core level, our our portfolio is uh, ESG-oriented. Yeah. My second question is on uh, exports, and if I link it to your expansion plans uh, in India, and also you said that the first uh, customers to be serviced will be like obviously the domestic customers. If I interconnect everything here, so if you can give us some sense on the current capacity utilizations in the operational plant, and whether these expansions will help you win, because I think in the past you have said that you may win larger mandates on export side, so export is still about 12%. So how do you see uh, this helping you out uh, and whether exports can grow faster than domestic once these capacities are operational? So, so let me be very clear that our, our, we are a multinational company present in 100 over countries and we do business everywhere. And we have some factories which supply into this global footprint and markets. Our prime focus in India is to serve a domestic market. That's how we live every morning and evening and make sure that we serve our customers and we continue to serve this expanding market. And that's where our expansion of our footprint is primarily focused. Now, as the India, and we are manufacturing in this country for 70 years, and now we have become fairly sophisticated manufacturer with a local supply chain uh, built around it. And that piece has become quite attractive for our global divisions to use to supply to other markets. So, so that's how our agenda is, and we will see this mix will continue to play up going forward. We don't prepare as an India management team an export strategy. We only support the export strategy of the ABB group. So that's how we play it. And the capacity utilization currently, which are the... So capacity okay. utilization, at least I think we are now at 90% of all mature plants is what we have, and I think we have uh, room to take care of the extra expansion. But I think when we talk of capacity expansion, we're really not meaning that we should add more facilities. First is to optimize existing facilities through uh, automated systems where it could uh, uh, <clears throat> optimize on people, optimize on uh, um, the various the resources. Therefore, that's the first one, and that's exactly what the customers also follow. So we follow what the customers teach us, and therefore uh, our first priority is to maximize the usage of the existing assets. So if I may, these are for expansions. So, so the August, uh, you know, the announcement that we have for ELSP factory, electrification smart product factory, we have used the same footprint of the shop floor, wherein we have doubled the manufacturing capacity reduce the shop floor footprint by 30% by using our robotics and automation solution, 
the productivity has gone up by 40 percent energy usage has gone down by 15 percent and uh, and and that's how that's how you know you carry out uh, the future expansion so that not all the time you have to build more brick and mortar uh, to expand the capacity and i think that's where our learnings are wherever is possible we first optimize uh, before we go into brick and mortar mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you sir those are my questions thank you before we take the next question, I'd like to remind the participants to limit their question to two per participant. If time permits, you may join the queue for any follow-up. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Amaya Mahurkar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Amaya, your line is unmuted. Please uh, proceed with the question. There is no response on the line of Amaya. We will move to our next question. That is from the line of Pavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, and at the outset, I'd like to congratulate the entire management for an exemplary performance. Uh, so I have three questions. Uh, pardon me for one extra. One is uh, uh, you are tracking 18 end user industry and markets. Uh, if you could just help us, maybe on a cumulative basis, all of the the 18 sectors, uh, the order pipeline that you would have, uh, how has that been over the last uh, nine months or so? Because one of your peers had mentioned about plateauing of the order pipeline. That's uh, question one. Second is uh, we have a certain uh, portion of imports which come from EU area where we have seen energy cost uh, spiraling. Um, if you could just help us understand implications on that and how are we taking care of it uh, through either alternative supplies or uh, pricing actions. Uh, the third uh, question is uh, very specific to the motions segment where we have seen some softening of the margin sequentially, wherein we see uh, margin expansion in some of the motor companies. So if you could just help understand uh, uh, the reason of softening of the margin, which is marginally below uh, the long period average of 11.4, currently at 10.5. Okay. Yeah, these are my so questions. Bhavin, uh, so, Bhavin, I will take the second and the third question, probably when uh, you could repeat the first question when Sanjeev comes in, okay? So the first question is, um, how do we look at imports from the EU area, and how are we taking care of it? So that's something which you had asked, right? Yes. So uh, yes, we do have imports from EU, EU uh, European uh, continent. So that's absolutely clear. So we don't. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the that's from where we have our feeder factories are, and we import material for quite a few of our offerings to the customer. So now uh, the first thing is that. Um, and the contracts are more uh, negotiated on a time-to-time -time basis when it comes to large contracts, and that goes into the pricing, which we have already discussed with the customer. So they are uh, hedged, and therefore you don't find any fluctuation uh, with respect to either currency, which we have protected, and also with the rates, because that's already built in the pricing. That's number two answer to your question on how the pricing happens, works for them. And then when it comes for the... Um, uh, uh, the flow businesses where it's more forecasting model which we adopt and that's how we have the rate contract which are fixed with the uh, businesses and that again goes to the customers right so now uh, to answer to your question so whether are we insulated against the crisis moments what Euro, um, uh, Eurozone is seeing at this point of time? Answer to that is yes, at this point of time. But there could be a situation in case that the local market is not able to accept that at a later point of time is where we will uh, review our strategy as to how we approach this topic, right? So, uh, I mean, creating an alternate resource for and uh, um, is, 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 an, uh, is not a cost-effective solution. Therefore, we uh, tend to believe that this is something what we should be able to manage. That's number one. Number two, you also said, uh, do, uh, we saw that um, the two questions on the motion. One you said is of the, we are seeing a softening of the margins, number one. And uh, number two, you also said that um, uh, what is the view of motors business as such, right, while we are peers are growing. 
So the first part of the question is that why uh, missing? So I think uh, um, what you had seen till now was probably an higher content of product businesses which were having a higher profitability what what you are seeing, right? While the system drives and other businesses which are traction converters, um, uh, which are more system-oriented businesses, which have an uh, throughput content, but and uh, with the margins may not be the same as what the flow business is. So that's a blend which you are seeing to see that is a reflection on the um, uh, profitability percentages which are softening, right? So because you had seen at a higher percentage earlier where it was more dominated by the uh, um, uh, flow businesses plus the exports, but now it is now a mix of systems as well as the uh, flow businesses, so you see that. Now the next question was, what's the sort of the motors uh, and, uh, business when we see this thing. Yeah, I think uh, we are all aware that um, uh, CG power is definitely uh, coming back and I think we have our own markets to play and we remain steady over there. And of course, any competition will have its impact on the way we operate. So we learn from them as well. So that's how it is. So and for Sanjeev, if you could repeat the question, it could be very useful, uh, uh, Bhagan. Sure, thanks. So uh, the question was uh, slide number nine, you have given outlook on your various end markets, high, moderate, low. Uh, if one uh, takes a cumulative order pipeline of all these 18 end markets uh, for ABB, uh, how are you seeing the movement of the pipeline over the last three to four quarters? Because one of the peers mentioned about uh, plateauing of the pipeline of the inquiries so so you can see that uh, we we have a as you said number of market segments and also number number of divisions which participate in it and as you know these markets or uh, have a different cyclicity of purchase of different products that we have you know right from uh, motion electrification, process automation, and robotics. So they go as a mix into the same industrial segments. So there are always some market segments which goes up and the other ones, they, they kind of go for the correction or slow down for a period of time. So that, that keeps happening. So, but we don't see an overall plateauing. We do see that one segment or the other plateaus for few weeks, few, few, few quarters, because they have already uh, let out a lot of contracts or there is a kind of a concern in that particular market segment, it plateaus. So as such, we have not seen a, a very strong uh, drawdown, but at this point of time, I do have our business area managers and the division managers on this call. I let them comment uh, from that perspective, especially since you mentioned about motion. So I can ask uh, Sanjeev Arora to give his point of view. He does have concern in certain market segment, but let me qualify what, how does he see the overall market? So, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for asking the question and thanks, Sanjeev. Uh, uh, so, see, I, um, in, in my perspective, uh, India uh, macroeconomics is very strong. So there is nothing to worry about it. Yes, uh, these some uh, waves do come in certain segments, uh, but we see a very strong momentum and I would say, you know, the enthusiasm in the customers, what we meet, is really a very bullish. Uh, uh, if we see on, on uh, you know, past uh, uh, developments when the metal prices were softening, and uh, we, we all anticipated that, yes, there could be some uh, headwinds, but then it can be, a, you know, in India, such a large country with such a large opportunities, the headwinds can only be for one or two or a couple of months. So, uh, so I think in, in a broader perspective, the growth story still remains uh, quite solid. Thank you so much for taking my question. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Deepak Krishnan from McQuarrie. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. I just wanted to understand with commodity prices now sort of plateauing, how do you kind of look at pricing trends going ahead? Do you feel any risk of pricing pullback? Or do you think that we could kind of maintain volume and value mix as we had done for the last two years? So far, what we have seen is that the uh, there was a pressure on the supply chain as well as inflation. 
and our customers participated with us because they understood that uh, supply chain inflation is there and they participated with it. And when the uh, supply chain inflation stabilizes, accordingly it will reflect in our uh, prices. Uh, now, at this point of time, we don't see any softening in terms of uh, uh, reversal of uh, those prices increases because right now it's more stabilizing. So we will continue to keep a very close watch as well as on the market demand side, and that determines uh, how how the prices are set uh, in the marketplace. Uh, sure, sir. And maybe just a follow-up question on the data center slide that you indicated the overall opportunity of close to a billion dollars. How are we kind of looking at it in terms of market share and competitive environment? Do you kind of see that ABB has an edge over there as compared to its other businesses, or how do you kind of look at the overall trend over there? So we definitely have an edge with uh, with large players, global players, because we serve them globally. So when they come to India, they do express a certain preference for ABB because we have the same products and solutions which are available to them in global markets. They are available in India. So there is a very clear trend and preference for us. So that's why we have seen a lot of repeat orders coming for the very large size data centers with very large players. Uh, I'm not at liberty to mention their names, but uh, you know them uh, who are operating in the market. When it comes to certain sub-segment of the market wherein the uh, sensitivity of the uh, buyer or the co-location supplier is not so high in terms of what technology and the solution they are providing, naturally the competitive pressures come there. So we, we do play the market segments which are uh, attractive for us, and also we serve the customers who are demanding high quality and high reliable power supply for their data center because they want to make sure the solutions they provide in their data centers are, are contributing to reliability and availability of the data center. So, so that's, a, that's, that's not a trend new for us uh, in India because we have participated in Europe, uh, Singapore, China, and many other places. We understand this market segment and sub-segments quite well. Hmm. Uh, sure, so maybe just one last follow-up from mine. Given that you're closer to your, you know, margin targets that you have, how would you look at the outlook ahead? Would you continue to enhance margin or would you feel at these margin levels, volume would be a major focus and gaining share? So how would you manage between profitability and, you know, top-line growth? So I think, uh, first of all, I think we do not want to give any projections about where we, where we will be with respect to uh, <clears throat> any of the topics because we don't do that. So now coming to your question of what's the sort of, but I could provide a direction. So as in the past, I mean, we've all been saying that our first, I mean, people who have been watching ABB, so they would have seen that our um, uh, margins, uh, PBT itself is something which was not so attractive. So now our first milestone is to make sure that we reach double digit and we remain steady on the double digit for some time so that we'll be able to see the translation into better path. So I think the for, for the on a cumulative basis, we are profit before tax and exceptional items is where we have reached um, across the, uh, the 10 percentage mark. So uh, we allow us some time to make sure that we are steady and you also have a sense of credibility on the numbers. And then probably then we should try to expand from there. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, thanks for the answer and best of luck with future quarters. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Amit Mahavar from Novama. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. So I just have one question. Uh, if we see the nine-month uh, results, uh, right, uh, the, the profitability is, uh, you know, even if I adjust for the Forex item, et cetera, it's almost touching 11, 11% plus. Um, you mentioned about the capacity utilization uh, of around 85, 90%. I just basically want to understand on motion and EP side, given that uh, next one, one and a half year, the pipeline of business in domestic market can be very strong, especially in uh, in low voltage products in motion and EP from railways and uh, data centers, et cetera. Um, do you think uh, the uh, capacity for you uh, will be a constraint, you know, in case we have you know, a reasonable uh, industry growth in these two segments, uh, uh, or do you think the new capacities that you've started plus the new mandate shift uh, uh, from parent, uh, you know, you've taken care of that, sir? Uh, we have taken care of that. So that's already, so we don't work on year or year, year on year or quarter to quarter basis. We have 
as we mentioned earlier, we are manufacturing it for 70 years. We have seen all possible cycles in this country. So right now, the cycle that we are observing, and even also our uh, organic cycle that of growth we see in India, we are well prepared multiple years ahead of uh, our planning and, and capacity increases. And, Amit, I think there's a lot of disturbance. Yes, sir, I have muted Amit. Please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Amit, when we look at capacities, we are not only looking at capacities of ABB. One is, of course, we use our facilities to uh, manufacture. But also important is that we need to look at the capacities of our sub sub players as well, because they are also an important partner for us in this growth journey. So I think the uh, teams, which, which is Sanjeev or anyone else, um, and their teams work with sub-suppliers also to make sure that when we are on this growth pattern, we are, they are also able to support us. So it's an uh, uh, engagement which is on all the sides so that we are able to look at capacities as not a constraint. So, so we don't see that, that that will come as a constraint for us. In fact, uh, when we make the capacity, we also make uh, uh, make a judgment uh, how much we will do supply to domestic market and how we will be export. So we always create a quite a quite a bit of uh, headroom for us as we plan forward. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Mongya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, the first question that I had was more on KPEX, and I'll kind of give you a background. Um, from from what we could gather from you, uh, say there was an exercise happening between uh, uh, the division heads of India and um, ABB Global on potential organic slash inorganic opportunities that may come uh, India's way, uh, wherein uh, and domestically you would want to invest. Um, has that exercise uh, um, broadly happened? And can this be uh, something that will drive your incremental capex plans a lot more than other things? Basically, <clears throat> I think as what uh, Sanjeev was mentioning earlier, and also we have Sanjeev Varur also line, I think uh, the plan for expanding or whatever it is, the first thing, as I again repeat, is to make sure that we have our existing capacities optimized to the hilt. So before we start expansions, right? On with, which is basically building a new factory as what we see. And in this particular journey, I think we did have uh, certain expansions what we have already done, and we'll have certain some more expansions will come in which we cannot uh, declare at this point of time, right? So uh, <clears throat> I, I think for us. We see that we have a capacity to manage the next um, uh, <clears throat> wave of growth, what will come in, right? And we remain consistent with that. Okay, no, just to clarify, uh, the question was more linked to any new business lines that may be coming up um, based on your discussion with the global entity and not existing business lines and that may open up. So, uh, but so, so we are adding we are adding new uh, products uh, which are not which were not manufactured here. We are expanding those capacities. As far as a global portfolio is concerned, no, we are not privy to any new uh, business being added at a global level. When it gets added, then it gets uh, reflected into our local as well. So what we will continue to do is because Indian market is becoming quite sophisticated. They are demanding more high-quality products, which is falling into our domain. So we are seeing many customers are exiting the so-called low cost and cheap uh, uh, products, and they are moving into the high-quality products, which ABB uh, and similar uh, provide. So that, that is creating an expansion, and there it has motivated us to localize certain products that we were not uh, producing in the country, and that's where certain expansions are also taking place, which you will come to know when we announce them in the near future. So that will add to our capacity and ability to do the market. On the inorganic side, of course, we have a global and local pipeline, and as and when such a decision is taken, of course, we will announce and provide you information. Um, understood. Um, um, the second question that I had was more on your uh, green energy offering. What I'm trying to kind of get a sense of is that uh, with your products going green, is the ROI for your customers um, becoming better? And in that scenario, is there a case to be made for uh, the margins of your company actually going up? So, uh, 
So as far as uh, products, are, you know, the green journey is concerned, I think we should be clear. It is a green practice that makes the customers as well as us and the suppliers green. And then there are three, uh, three areas. One is your own manufacturing campuses. Uh, then you are manufacturing facility where the product is produced. And third is the product itself, which, is, which creates a green, green credential for it. So the first part and the second part is very quick to do. And those practices, if the customers bring into their factories, their, uh, their offices, et cetera, so you, or the new buildings which are being constructed, so that's a low-hanging fruit. The journey to convert products itself into green, uh, that is a long journey. And, and that's something, you know, that's where most of the companies have the 2030 target. So, in, in, so what we are targeting right now is the basic practice of customers to be able to use more efficiency motors, drives, and better solutions for their building so that the building consumes less, 30% less energy. So that's what you will see in the first and the second wave and leading to the product itself, which are being converted into green products. Like for example, our switch gears, they have now the green gas for that matter, which is added, which was not there before. So that the, uh, you know, that's the kind of a solution which start hitting the market as we uh, go forward. So it's a journey, but there's a lot to be converted in the marketplace in the phase one and phase two to gain the energy efficiency credentials for the customers using our product as we supply them. Hmm. Um, understood. I have more questions. I'll get back into the queue. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Harsha from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. My first question is on the PBT margins on the nine month basis. So there's a 220 basis point expansion. So can you just help to understand because that uh, base would have a COVID impact and a forex impact. So on a normalized basis, how should we look at it? So I think you need to look at CBT before tax and exceptional. That doesn't include any um, one-off items, right? So that's something which is reflective of a normal business scenario what we have. And I think there is where I said we are at 10.2 percent. If you go to the financial summary slide, which is there in our presentation, so that gives you an adequate input as to how the margins are, and we'll be stable with that. Okay. Thank you. And my second question is with regards to revenue recognition. So is there any delay in this quarter apart from the process automation? Thank you. Uh, I don't think we have any delayed execution or delayed this thing. So we don't, we see our, our orders execution on time, right? So what is probably um, is an um, uh, challenge which every uh, industry sees is about the supply chain disruptions. And that is more with the robotics where we have a uh, <coughs> semiconductor type of issue which always hits us and also something in the right product. So but otherwise, I don't see, we don't see any major um, uh, <coughs> delays in terms of execution. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Last question. Yes, sir. We'll take the next question from the line of Harshit Patel. Please go ahead from Equity Securities. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first question is on our electrification segment, where we are scaling up very nicely. So now within that, how is the traction in integrated solutions for building automation? So I think uh, uh, in last one year or so, you have multiple times mentioned that our focus is there uh, uh, more and more there towards uh, gaining some more market share. I think which we missed out uh, uh, over the last cycle, uh, uh, if I'm correct. So have we been able to gain a significant market share in such building automation solutions in last one year or so? And uh, just a follow up to that would be uh, what would be the proportion of such system orders in our overall electrification segment orders? So we have solutions we, where we provide these to our integrator partners in the marketplace. And they are the ones who uh, can uh, provide the integrated experience for the building automation for our customers. Uh, so we are seeing a significant pickup of the components which are being purchased and the solutions or the same, you know, kind of the products which construct those solutions by our integrators. And we know that this is a journey to educate our customers and especially the buildings with the higher credentials uh, or higher ratings. 
those are the ones we are targeting and we are seeing a good conversion across the country for uh, for our products and solutions i would say uh, we will not be talking about it in the market share terms yet we will allow it one or two more years that the concepts that we have brought in they are absorbed by the new buildings being built and also the people who are converting their existing building so we are seeing the high quality players in the marketplace uh, they are they are recognizing those solutions and implementing them so so that's where we see the market but we see a long walk in this particular market hmm. Sure. Coming to the next question of how much the system businesses in the electrification, roughly on about 15 percentage could be on system and network solutions. What we give from basically from medium voltage. Understood. Uh, thank you, sir. So my second question is: uh, You have received an order uh, related to electronics and semiconductors for a new plant of a leading white goods company uh, that you have mentioned in your presentation. So, could you elaborate a little bit on that as to what is our scope in this project and are many such orders uh, in the pipeline? Just a second. So, we refer to the presentation. And I'm, I'm, I'm referring to slide number nine, uh, where you have talked about, uh, where you have segmented your uh, end user industries into high, moderate, and low growth industries. So there, uh, you have given this uh, a little detail uh, uh, on this order from a white goods manufacturing company uh, related to electronics. Uh, Subrata, do you want to have a go at it? If Subrata is on the call. Uh, sir, request you to please unmute your line. Yeah, can, can I repeat the question again, please? I have been called. Sure, uh, no problem, sir. But, sir, uh, you have received an order uh, related to electronics and semiconductors uh, manufacturer who is setting up a new plant. So this is essentially a white goods company uh, who might be doing uh, some sort of assembly uh, of such uh, 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 solutions. So could you elaborate a little bit more on what is our scope in this project, what exactly we are providing uh, this to uh, to this particular customer, and what is the pipeline of this kind of orders as of now? Yeah, uh, so uh, exactly, it's a very good question. What we have observed, it is not only in... Subrata, we are missing you. Sorry, missing everyone. Uh, Mr. Subrata, sir. Go to you. Hello. Sir, your voice yeah. is breaking, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, Subrata, Hello. we can hear you, but I think you we missed you initially. If you can repeat it again. So, Subrata, your line is uh, not so clear. Sorry, Harshit. Uh, Application. I think uh, Subrata can qualify this. Maybe we'll find a way to get you an answer on this. Hmm. Sure, sir. No problem. Uh, thank you very much for answering my question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraints, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference back to Mr. T.K. Sridhar for closing remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Aman, I think, for conducting the call. And uh, thank you, everyone, for participating in this call and getting to understand how was the performance of this thing. And also thanks to the management who could participate in this particular call. So on this uh, count, I <coughs> wish you all a very happy new year and a good ending for 2022. So we again get back to you in the first, uh, in the month of February, after our year in the which will be more interesting as we, as we travel this journey. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of APB India Limited, that concludes today's call. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.